Hi, hot on the heels of the previous video where I uh, tore down the Cambridge Z88 computer, we've got another one of a similar ilk, the Amstrad Notepad NC100, and it uses the same BBC Basic we saw in the Cambridge Z88, apparently. And uh, it's a little bit uh, younger, I guess. It's uh, 90s, um, early 90s vintage, there we go, 1992 vintage there, made in Japan instead of made in Scotland. And uh, it's, you know, similar little battery powered A4 notebook. Looks like it has a battery backup in there, of course, and a little, couple of little flip out feet. This one's actually missing the battery door here. So a uh, bummer, but still it's gonna work. It's got a serial and a parallel port on it. DC jack, contrast, eh, and a memory card expansion slot. And the good thing is, it doesn't work. So I thought we'd have a crack at fixing this one. First thing I'm gonna do is check the current consumption of the battery to see if there's any standby current at all, because it does seem to use a soft power switch. So no, I can't see it. That's No, that's not point one. It's still the same if I lift the probes off there. So I expect it to draw at least, you know, that's like in the order of uh, uh, 10 nanoamps. So, you know, you'd expect it to have some sort of standby power consumption, but it's got zip. Now there's one totally fascinating aspect of this thing, which I absolutely love. Look at this door down here. You flip that off and look what you've got. You've got what looks like the ROM chips. Let's whack it around here so we can see it. There it is, Amstrad UK A2. That looks like it's a masked ROM chip so that you can change the ROM just by lifting the panel and whacking in a new chip. I don't think I've seen that on any machine before. Now there was one of the screws missing on this thing, so maybe somebody's had a crack at this thing. Only one way to find out. Looks like we have some metal work under here. Looks like there's a couple of catches along here. I've got to snap off first. And here we go. I got it. I think I thought I did. Yep, there we go. Ta-da! Nakajima. I guess that's a, uh, I don't know, is that some sort of date code? Production date code? Look at the shielding on this thing. It's actually quite... Uh, Quite, quite substantial, they shielded the entire keypad backing on that and the main board as well. Neat. And it looks like this just lifts out here, the keyboard's connected. Looks like I can probably flip it over like this and lift that off, ta-da, that's easier. We have the main board, predominantly uh, surface mount, almost all of it, and we've got the uh, LCD up here, which we didn't see last time on the Z. 88. So yeah, that's actually um, fairly modern, but that's what you'd expect in the differences between the uh, 1987 vintage uh, Z88 and this 1992 vintage NC100. Now let's have a look and see what we've got here. Yes, we do have a soft uh, tactile power switch up here, so maybe there's something wrong with the uh, just the power on circuitry. It could be that simple or it could be more complex. I guess we'll find out. Got our DC input jack up here. There's the uh, battery backup, CR2032 backup battery. Got a couple of mod wires going around here. They've uh, hacked in there. There's a little resistor there, plus two mod wires. So they've done this after, uh, after production. Obviously, they decided to make those changes. Eh, couldn't be bothered to respin the board. Cheaper just to put a couple of mods on there. There's our Zilog Z80 CPU. Uh, our main uh, LSI uh, ASIC up here, which would handle pretty much uh, everything else the, um, apart from the CPU, because we've basically got the big LSI, we've got the memory, there's the ROM socket on the back, there's another device there, not sure what that is offhand, and a couple other miscellaneous uh, chips over here, and another one up there, but apart from that, that's it. I mean, this would be the serial chip up here, because that goes off to the serial port, um, but this puppy would handle all of the system architecture for the Z80, uh, for a Z80 uh, CPU computer. And we've got our date code, 20th week 92. So it was uh, manufactured, would have been manufactured fairly shortly after that. And all the date codes uh, for the various chips seem to uh, match. So would have been manufactured in the weeks or months after that. Um, there's no crystal. It just uses a uh, ceramic resonator there at uh, 12. 
two megahertz. I, this is a real-time uh, clock chip, of course. I, you know, I don't know the number of hand, 8521, but there's the 32, oh, can't see that on the screen. There's the 32 kilohertz uh, watch crystal right there. Nice little solder strap on that. I like it. Um, pretty old school stuff. A HC00, which they didn't populate for some reason, not sure why. And it is all, um, you know, fairly modern surface mount stuff. It's not ancient like we saw in the 1987 vintage Z88. And there's the main chipset D65034 GD093. Ugh, man, I reckon you'd have a hard time finding data on that. I don't even think I'll bother Googling it. We'll just have a quick look at the display board here. We've obviously got some sort of, uh, you know, 8-bit parallel interface or something like that. And we've got Oki uh, brand display controllers, very common uh, for the time and still nowadays as well. These are 5299Cs, so it's got a bunch of 5299Cs all the way across there until we get to the end where... It is an M5298A instead of a 5299C. And on the back of the board here, we've got a surprising amount of uh, passive stuff around here. Tons of it. Check it out. They've got that uh, plastic insulating uh, sheet there so it doesn't short out to the shielding. There's an absolute buttload of uh, resistors and SOT23s on here as well. Tons of them. There's our ROM, and uh, there's a few more stuff up there near the parallel port, as you'd expect. A couple near the serial, and a whole bunch more. Uh, looks like uh, series resistors on the expansion header there. Now, before we start to go feral on this thing with the scope, let's check out some basics. Here's our uh, battery input here. It looks like it's got these two traces going directly all the way under there all the way under there, nowhere else directly over to the DC power jack. So it looks like it's just in parallel with the DC power jack there. Now, if we, this uh, soft button obviously has to do with something around here, soft start power switch, but let's have a zoom up in here and there's something that immediately sticks out. F301, 0.8 amps, fuse, ha ha. Can it be that easy? Let's get the meter out and measure it. Let's have a go here. The meter works as both a convenient uh, prop for the item on video and... Ah, oh, man, it's blowing. Ah, oh, so, so much for the repair video, folks. Sorry, thought it'd be more interesting than that. No, probably not. But of course the thing is, why did it blow? I don't know. Let's um, measure the other side of it and ground, shall we? So we'll get our ground here. Let's assume that this around here is ground. I'm pretty sure the big plane is always ground. So if we measure this side of it, no, no, 0.25 meg, that's all fine and dandy. Don't mind that at all. And it looks like they uh, specced into the design a common mode choke there but they've just decided to uh, short it out there's the ground so it would have gone from the dc input jack through to the ground like that but it doesn't and uh, of course the dc input jack through to those filter caps there but it doesn't and we'll just measure across that filter cap there to make sure it's not shorted and no it's not 46k and you'd expect it to rise as the uh, capacitors charge up so that's all working hunky-dory. So um, I'm going to presume that the uh, power rails, I'm not sure if there's another voltage regulator on here, there certainly could be. Um, that there looks like it could be a voltage regulator, so maybe they have a 5 volt regulator on this thing, although if you're powering it from uh, 6 volt batteries, the four uh, AA's in series, that's um, 6 volts uh, nominal. Um, but that's going to drop fairly drastically, so a 5 volt uh, regulator, even a low dropout one, isn't going to regulate uh, for very long over that full battery discharge curve. So what I'll do is I'll just power this thing from a 6 volt bench supply and uh, let's give it a go. So 6 volts, switch it on and soft power switch. Is it drawing any current? Oh, yep, 
There we go. Yep, it's on. Ah, oh, man, too easy. Where's the... Yeah, there we go. Lithium battery is low. Please switch off and replace battery. <laughs> we have a winner, folks. All it was was a fuse. That's actually very disappointing because I was hoping that we would uh, hopefully we'd get something more exciting than that. But no. Well, I didn't have a uh, direct surface mount replacement, so I just put a little axial one in there. No problem. It should fit nicely against that metal shield, I think. We've got the insulator there. Not a problem. So I'm going to put this sucker back together and we'll power it up. And here we go. We can see the standby uh, current consumption here. About 72 microamps or thereabouts. So let's switch this sucker on. Bloody default AC. Pain in the ass. So let's see. About 60 milliamps. So very similar to the draw of the Z88. Let's have a quick squiz here at the main clock. And... Should be 12, there we go, 12.363 megahertz. That's the, um, that's of course not a crystal, that's a ceramic resonator. And let's have a look at the main oscillator as well, which is pin one of the 44 pin PLCC package. And it is continuously, I won't say it, yes, it is continuously running. Although this thing uh, isn't at, in, it, at its application mode yet, it's just giving that, uh, display there you go it just switched off so uh but let's what was that running at let me switch it back on there you go it's running at 6.18 megahertz so that's pretty quick for a z80 processor and because the back case is not on this thing i need to still uh, access and probe the circuitry uh, i can't put the coin cell in back which is really annoying so i've hooked up another supply over here so let's power it on and we should get no lithium battery ah helps if i turn the load switch on <laughs> Let's give that a go again. There we go. Ta-da! We're up. We're in the main screen. Brilliant. Works a treat. And interestingly, the current drawer is now uh, jumping around a bit, but it's, you know, going anywhere from 40-odd uh, milliamps up to 50. So that possibly could indicate that the uh, clock is uh, skipping again to save uh, cycles and save power. So let's probe that again and see what we get. And bingo, there it is. Let's single shot capture that, see what we get. We've got a couple of bursts, huge, large bursts here of uh, two milliseconds, six, just over six milliseconds each, with a dead time of uh, almost four milliseconds between them. And then we've got a uh, shorter little burst here which that's about 200 microseconds per division, 200, 400, 600, you know, 700 odd microsecond bursts there. There you go. So it looks like it has a couple of these shorter bursts with a couple of longer bursts. And uh, it's just waiting for the uh, keypad. I'm assuming it's just waiting for a key. So let's press a key. And yeah, we can see it insert. The, ah, there we go. It just... Not only did it insert a couple of more, I'm not sure what I'm actually running here. I have to flip my screen over. I'm not doing anything, actually. Um, enter doesn't do anything at the main screen. So let's go into the word processor. Press the yellow and red. So there we go. It does seem to jump around a bit, between, uh, actually between having none of those longer bursts. See, there it is. Very interesting. So let me call up the word processor. There we go. Bang. You saw it uh, just go full speed there. And we're now inside. No, we're not inside the word processor. It's weird. So you can see how this main uh, system ASIC here is always running by that uh, 12 megahertz ceramic resonator. And, you know, it's they intern I guess it can shut down its internal uh, parts as well when it's not doing anything to save power. But the oscillator is always running there and it only supplies the clock through to the CPU uh, w when it needs to. So this will handle the uh, keyboard as well so that it's uh, sitting there waiting for the key presses to uh, turn the thing on, supply power, interrupt the CPU, boot it up, and uh, start it running again and action those keys. And that's how they save power on these types of systems. And this is the coolest key ever, secret menu. Oh, let's see what's in there. Let's press this sucker and see what we get. 
Here we go. Duh, enter password. Oh, let's try. I don't know. Zero, 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 zero. What the? Sagan was here? This is one heck of a big calculator display. Woo! Love it. No scientific functions though. Bummer. Unfortunately, there seem to be a couple of stuck keys on this thing. The shift and this one up here seem to uh, get stuck. I've tried to sort of clear them, but uh, it doesn't seem to work. If anyone's got any good ideas for that, let me know. And it's really not obvious how to get into the BBC Basic either, because it looks like you can't scroll this main menu. It's only got the word processor, calculator, and diary, address book, which you use, you know, function, sort of, you know, word that'll take you into the word processor, start a new document, and this takes you into the calculator, and eh, you know, um, press stop, takes you back to the main menu. Well, it's function B, apparently. There it is, and there's RT Russell again. And we've got our little basic program there, looping through, printing I. Yes, it has to scroll the whole screen. I know I haven't put the semicolon at the end of it. Whatever, let's run it. Well, it does seem to be substantially quicker than the uh, Z88. No surprises, it's running exactly the same basic interpreter on the uh, Z80, but it's running at uh, like a double the clock rate. So let's uh, probe this clock again and see what we get. Let's hook it in here and pin one on our clock. There you go, it is fully, fully continuous. So let's uh, put this down here and we are getting more, uh, just over five volts there. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And if I adjust the uh, Voltage on my supply, that doesn't go up, so that's clearly being regulated. Look, now here's our main clock, and it's just over uh, five volts there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my supply voltage here and see where that thing drops out. Ah, no, it looks like, there you go. It's regulated. It's regulated, folks. It's not a, it's not a five volt linear regulator. So, it's working all the way down. Wow, there we go, it drops out at about 3.3 volts. That's very impressive. And with everything tech, there's an enthusiast group for everything. I present to you the cpcwiki.eu, a surgical guide to the Amstrad NC. Here it is. <laughs> They've got some uh, cool looking uh, ASCII diagrams here, which uh, show, which tell you all the details there it is six megahertz yeah we measured that 64k uh, internal memory 15k system 11k upper 32k lower it's got a pcmca slot which allows you to expand to one meg uh, maximum it's got a 480 by 32 pixel display usually 8 by 80 there you go 40 to 60 milliamps which is what we what what we measured and uh, how to get the firmware number memory cards how to open it already done that what's inside They've labeled all the chips. There we go. There's the uh, 6 megahertz uh, Z80. There's the uh, UPD 65034 uh, custom chip. They call it customer chip, but that's just a custom ASIC. And, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of miscellaneous other stuff. We've got the uh, UART and the RS-232 driver and the real-time clock. And, eh. and interestingly, down here, this is what I like, the simplified block diagram and as i mentioned before ic302 here is the main asic and it runs continuously on the 12.2 megahertz ceramic resonator there and everything hooks into it i mean here's ic301 up here here's the cpu and it's hardly you know according to this block diagram it's hardly doing anything at all and uh and everything runs off that so you've got the, the lcd controllers built in there there we go directly off it the keyboard matrix of course so it knows um when you've actually pressed a key so it can you know start up the clock and interrupt the cpu and all that sort of jazz and uh then we've got our uh, real-time clock and pcmca is all hooked in there or your memory address and all that stuff is all hooked into that system asic so the thing man wouldn't be able to do a damn thing without that asic and let's scroll down here we've got our power supply block diagram we can probably zoom into that 
a bit more here it is um yeah there it is six volts dc in battery directly connected across it there's the fuse that blue little pain in the ass and uh plus six volts and looks like there's plus five volt uh voltage regulator as well five volts uh bk there which is the uh, backup for the buffer ram so the s ram s ram doesn't need to be refreshed it you know it only takes micro amps or nano amps to uh to actually retain that information so as soon as you stop the clock and you've as long as you've got uh, power on those s rams it will um retain the data in there for you so you've got minus 15 volts for the lcd display ah a couple of other things 4.2 2.3 3.2 ah man this thing's got everything here we go the microprocessor ah the customer chip <laughs> custom chip i love it it's got it has multiple functions clock generator for cpu and uart uh, the pia adapter for the printer lcd screen keyboard memory management pcmca sound generator of course forgot about that man a whole ton of stuff firmware static random access memory ah this wiki's got everything i love it and good on your hands jurgen bowling if i'm pronouncing that correctly from Dusseldorf in Germany. Fantastic. And contributors McDeath and Nilkuder as well. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for sharing the information. It's brilliant. So there you go. There's a little look at yet another uh, vintage notebook computer. Hope you liked it. Sorry about the repair. Eh, boring as bat poo. Ah, you can't win all the time. But anyway, if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EV blog forum. And if you like it, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.